This is a 3D printed wing section designed with custom internal ribs to maximize strength, keep it lightweight, and also make it easy to print. But this design didn't happen overnight. To understand how we got here, we need to look back at my 3D printed nano wing project. The ultimate goal with that is to have a small sub 250 gram 3D printed nano wing capable of long endurance autonomous flights with FPV. Designing a small airframe that includes all these aspects is already pretty difficult. And the fact it's all 3D printed makes it even more of a challenge, especially for hitting that sub 250 gram goal. Compared to other materials, 3D printing is generally heavier and less durable. And when it comes to such a small plane, ensuring lightweight parts without compromising durability and structure is really important. When it comes to 3D printing airframes, they are generally printed in this material called lightweight PLA, which can be nearly half the weight as standard PLA. This is really important for keeping the parts lightweight, but how the part is printed is just as important. There are usually two ways to do this. The first way is to just import a solid part and have the slicer generate the shell and infill, which is basically the structure of the whole part, by changing the infill density and can make the part heavier, lighter, or stronger. This way is the simplest and is what I did when printing my first few iterations of the nano wing design. But doing it this way for some reason worked very poorly for me because even when following parameters by other people who 3D print airframes with this active foaming lightweight PLA, the parts were reaching their targeted weight but had no more structural integrity than a crumpled up paper ball. What was happening was that the infill responsible for keeping the wing shape and rigidity would collapse under very little pressure. Just the smallest amount of pressure can permanently damage the infill and deform the part. I tried various settings and configurations, but nothing really worked. My temporary solution was just to choose an infill type that provided the most strength and increased the infill density. The problem with this is that each infill line, or whatever you call it, is still extremely weak, so the increased density of the infill is required just to help spread the pressure. But this just makes the part much heavier, and the infill itself is still very vulnerable to permanent damage and deformity. Second way is designing the custom ribs in CAD in the first place. Now there are quite a few ways to do this, which I'll talk about later, but the idea is unlike using standard infill, which the weight is directly linked to the strength, it should be possible to optimize the ribs to make the part lighter while also making it stronger and more resilient. Before attempting to design the wing ribs, I went to put in the new filament I got and realized the settings for the filament were the exact same for standard PLA, which didn't make any sense at first, until I realized this lightweight PLA is pre-filmed, meaning it will print more like standard PLA. I compared the density of the standard filament to the active foaming lightweight PLA and saw pre-filmed PLA was somewhere in the middle. I never intended to use this filament, but decided to give it a try and print some quick parts with standard infill. First thing I realized is that the material felt super strong, and more like regular plastic. To be fair, it did look pretty heavy for its current size, but it's way stronger than we needed to be. So I decided I would give this pre foam filament a try. My first idea was to essentially pre-slice the part in my CAD software, meaning I would create the ribs and intersect it with the wing body. By intersecting the parts, this should leave us with some internal ribs that fit perfectly in the wing. Then of course after that, we can hollow the main wing body to give us our shell. So I hopped on my computer, created the ribs and shell, and started printing. I only printed a small portion of the wing, but I could already tell the shell and ribs were way too thick. The reason this was happening is because the nozzle needs to retract to print the internal ribs. Now what I wanted it to do was print the whole shell first, then print the internal ribs. But for some reason, my slicer didn't want to do that. And if I set the wall thickness to exactly the nozzle diameter, which is 0.4 millimeters, it creates a lot of gaps due to the retractions. This ultimately forced me to make the wall thicker, which fixes the printing problem, but it makes the part really heavy. So I decided to find some other solution. I kept messing around with the settings and other stuff, but found out using Prusa Slicer made it so it would print the parts correctly without the wall gaps. And this time I'm not using the X pattern and the ribs are just straight lines because I underestimated how much stronger this filament is. When this part finished printing, I was super surprised not only by how clean it was, but also by how much strength it had. The sections where there were no ribs, the skin was still super strong and could take quite a bit of pressure while still holding its shape. So I was pretty happy with this result. 12.6 grams. That is actually really good. This is I know this isn't the most scientific test because I'm not I don't have other prints to compare it to, but when I've looked at other people printing airframe like wing sections of similar sizes and other parts I've printed in the past. Around like, for this size wing, around like 10 to 15 grams is usually pretty good. So for its, especially for its strength, for 12 grams, this is, pr I, I am pretty proud of how this turned out. I don't know if I'm going to use it for the actual plane or something, but I do want to mess around with actually the active lightweight foaming PLA and see if I can get some lighter parts because the whole point is to get super light parts that are strong enough. I don't need incredibly strong parts, but... I think I'm going to use this technique in the future for some other points. When trying to figure out how to design the ribs for the active foaming filament, I referred back to Tom Stanton's VTIL project, which he used a very interesting method for printing the wings that I never heard of before. The way his ribs were designed made it so each layer was printed in one continuous loop. 
This would reduce the printing time and avoid the mess created by the foaming characteristics. This way is done by instead of merging the ribs into the wing, you actually subtract them from the wing. This tricks the printer into thinking this sliver is part of the shell. And this works perfectly with foaming filament because when the material expands, it basically fuses with the material next to it, creating a perfect structural part without having to lift up the nozzle. To do this for the entire wing section, we can just take our X pattern we created earlier and instead subtract it from the solid wing body. Now designing the structure is pretty difficult and finicky and there are quite a few details I'm leaving out, but I'll be making a step-by-step -step tutorial after this video to show you how to design these internal ribs with servo cutouts and spar holes specifically in on shape. So stay tuned for that if you want to know how to do this. For printing the newly designed wing section, I printed a part using 4% gyro to infill and thoroughly watched the guy saying the parameters and how to print it. And this is how it turned out. This is so delicate. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. It's, it just... Yeah, there's is literally no way that this would work. Yeah, you just you can literally just like press it a little bit, and the whole part is just it's gone. If anybody could let me know what I'm doing wrong here, because I would like to figure out why this infill stuff just doesn't work with the lightweight filament. But it's time to start printing the actual new design for the wing. And once it finished printing, it was clear it did not disappoint. It came out super clean, no mess, and it was really light. For some comparison, the Polymaker pre-foam filament part weighed 12.5 grams. The same part printing an active foaming filament with gyroid infill that sucked weighed 10.8 grams. And this part weighs 9.5 grams. And for how strong it is, this is a huge win. I was already happy with how it was as is, and I was planning to just end the testing here. But I realized that the gaps with the supporting ribs felt really strong and rigid, but the gaps with just the skin felt a bit too weak. To fix this, I'm going to increase the density of the X pattern, which you might think will make the part heavier. However, I'm going to be cutting out some bigger gaps in the side of the ribs. What this does is that it creates a combination of ribs going from each end of the wing that supports the wing shape and short ribs supporting the skin. And once it finished printing, it was clear it worked quite well. So it had equal structural strength in the previous test and a stronger supported skin. I then printed the rear of the wing with this new designed internal structure and gotta say, it just looks so cool. Don't know how to explain it, but just looking at this piece is just so satisfying. So ultimately, I would say this project or testing, I guess, was a huge success. I'll definitely be using this method for the next nano wing iteration. And remember, if you want to know how to design this yourself, I'll be making a tutorial right after this and show you the step-by-step -step walkthrough. Before I end this video, I would like to mention that I do have an Instagram where I post sneak peeks to stuff that isn't on my main channel. So consider following if you want to see more content. And I have a Kofi. These types of engineering projects I do take quite a bit of time and effort, and they can get really expensive. So if you're willing to donate a few bucks, I would highly appreciate it. Okay, bye. Subscribe.